Now we're going to talk about logarithms. By the way, I love this one here, square root of answer <laughs> instead of Vance. Ever since I saw this meme, every time I see someone wearing Vans, I think square root of answer, hey, nice. <laughs> so maybe that ruins it for you now whenever you see that. <laughs> All right, so let's use what we already know about exponents. Remember about exponents, we've learned that um, this right here is the base, remember? And this up here is called the exponent. All right, we're gonna use that. Now we're gonna go in this whole world of logarithms, which look really strange. It takes some getting used to, okay? So don't worry about it if it's a little bit weird if you've never seen this before. But we're gonna do uh, this little trick right here for logs. And it really, it all hinges upon this one thing. Luckily, this part right here is in your formula booklet. So, I mean, that's at least helpful. We're gonna write something like this, it's called log. We write log for short for logarithm. Um, and we're gonna say like this, we put a base, so it has its own base as well. So we say log base A, and you're gonna see that's gonna be a good thing to talk about base, because that's gonna tell you about that. Log base A of B, for example, equals, maybe I call it X. And now in your formula book, if they write it like this, they put a little arrow, it just means these two things are here, same, same on one side or the other. Um, you can rewrite it. Now, if you think about it then, didn't we just call this a base? So if I want to write it as an exponent, it becomes the base of my exponent. Now, the really weird part is, uh, watch carefully now, it goes uh, like this. It goes uh, to the power of x equals b. This is actually what you get on your formula booklet. But I want you to, I mean, this should almost, not even almost, this should really be in your head. You shouldn't even need this. because This is this thing we're going to use it so much, this idea. So a nice little trick that I like to use is watch this. I like to think of it like this. Whatever the base is, I say this to the power of this equals this. See, so a to the power of x, that's what I did here, equals b. So I say this to the power of this equals this. That's how I like to write them. If I think of them that way, things are a lot easier. If you're not told the base, because sometimes we'll just say like log of 5, and you might think, oh no, what does that mean? That's the same thing as saying log base 10. It's just that we're a little bit lazy. So if you don't see the base, if you're not told what the base is, the base is actually 10. It's a 10. It's a little stealth 10. It's like when we say like x. Well, you could actually write as x to the power of 1. It's like a little, you know, we tend to not say that it's that. Same thing with like square root. We don't put the 2 for the square root. So let's see if we can deal with this here. So let's solve for x. So some people, they get this right away. Some people take some while. That's what I'm trying to show you a little bit here. So if we want to use this trick, then let's see. This is the base, isn't it? So I would say 2 to the power of x equals 8. Now you can just think about it. You can think, huh, 2 to the power of what gives you 8? And you can therefore say, oh, x then must be 3. You could see it directly that way. Or you could also decide to look at it and say, all right, uh, I'm going to rewrite these like we've done before in another video I showed you at least. 2 to the power of x, I could try to get these both as the same base. I could rewrite 8 as 2 to the power of 3, can't I? And hey, same base, so the exponent means x equals 3. Ta-da! It's all the same. Math is supposed to work no matter how you do it, right? So there we go. At least in theory, it's not always the case, but we'll see. So log rules, you also get these on your formula booklet, which is nice. So if you have the same base and you're multiplying two numbers, so log base A of X times Y, it's going to be, well, log base A. They just call it A here just to generalize it. What happens with this here? You actually add these two things. So it's log base A of X plus log base A of Y. This one. If you have things divided, we subtract them. So it's kind of strange. So this right here becomes log base A of X minus log base A of Y. Those are the two kind of weird ones. So let's actually do a practice one for these. Uh, maybe I'll put these here in boxes. These are really important, right? So we're going to put that in a box and this one right here in a box. Uh, did I do that over here? Yeah, good. So these ones are here. These green ones are really important. Let's actually try to apply them. So let's say I say log base 2 of 5 plus log base 2 of 3. I can say, ah, well, they both have the same base, don't they? And because of that, then I can do this trick. So I can say, ah, that's the same thing as, remember what happens when you add two numbers like this? See, so adding two numbers is the same thing as multiplying them in a single log. So I can say, fine, it's going to be the log, don't forget, it's still base 2, of 5 times 3. Right? So that's just log base 2 of 15. There we go. So that one's done. Same thing over here. We're going to use the same idea. 
We're not told the base, so we know it must be base 10. Um, and we're going to say, ah, well, two things subtracted, just like this right here, I know that I can divide them. So this is the same thing as saying log of 27 over 3. And 27 divided by 3 is 9. So it's just log 9. There we go. So far so good? They're a little bit weird. There's a weirder one. This one is, I got to say, this is the one that people don't think to do. A lot of people get really stuck on really complicated questions. Sometimes this is the trick, okay? So it's not that there's always one way to solve things. There's lots of ways of doing things. I'm just going to try to show you a few different ways. So if you have a log base A of X, this is like your magic trick in math. It turns out later on this solves so many things. The fact that you can take a log, an exponent, the exponent can come right in front. So you can actually say M log base A of X. That's the same thing which is awesome. So you can take that M, put it right in front. This is a, a really important one. This one comes in to help you when you really don't know what to do. So let me just show you now. These won't always be super obvious why I'm doing what I'm doing here, but let's see if we can do this. So I'm going to try to write this right here at least as uh, maybe some different, should I say, um, uh, powers of two. Because can you see I've got the number eight and I've got the number four. And it looks like they should be some sort of power of two. So I'm going to rewrite this. Before I do anything else, I'm not going to do any fancy stuff. I'm just going to, because right now I'm kind of stuck. You might think, oh, I can just use this trick. But no, 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 no. It's only the log of the two numbers divided. You don't have the log of something over the log of something. So you can't use this trick here. Huh? So because of that, then what can I do? Well, I can rewrite 8 as a log base 2. Uh, sorry, not log base 2. Sorry, a uh, exponent of 2. So if I take a base of 2 and I say 2 to the power of 3. Do you know that's the same thing as 8? Eight? 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. And I can divide this by a log, let's see, let's think about 4. Can I rewrite 4 as something with a base of 2? I can. It's 2 to the 2. See what I've just done? I just said 8 is the same thing as 2, uh, two cubed. So I want you to be sort of well trained that whenever you see the number 8, you know, that's 2 cubed. 4 is 2 squared. If you see the number uh, 9 or 27, think these are things with a base of 3. So let's keep going. Now we're going to use this trick. Uh, this 3 now can come right in front. This 3 can come in front and go 3 log 2. This 2 can come in front and make it 2 log 2. Do you see what happens now? Magic occurs. Those cancel out. And my answer is just 3 halves. So these aren't always obvious, right? So I just want to make sure, you know, we practice a little bit. I'm just trying to make my numbers a little bit nicer. There we go. All right, let's keep going. Uh, oh, by the way, I didn't tell you this, but uh, log and 10 to the x, they undo each other. So uh, I'll show you that just in an example. There's other ways to solve this particular one. I just want to show you this. By the way, I love this. You know this expression, time flies when you're having fun? I love this. A clock says time flies. <laughs> it's so good. I totally need this clock. All right, so solve for x, one way to do it. Let's think about this this way right here, to do logs and 10 to the x as they undo each other. Nice easy trick is on your calculator, very often the log button is written right up against this 10 to the x, so this sort of helps you out. So if I want to do this right here, one way, I mean, there's a number of ways of doing this. I can see it as a power of 10. Uh, so let me just show you that sort of cheap way. The cheap way is to consider this right here as a little 10, right? I'm going to then rewrite it as an exponent. I can say, ah, that means a 10 to the power of 3. Remember, this to the this equals this. x is 10 to the 3. Well, what's 10 to the 3? It's 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. So I can say x is 1,000. Ta-da! Now, that I didn't use that trick, though. I just did it by writing it as an exponent. Instead, I'm going to try to use this trick instead. So watch just, I'm going to try to walk you through it. Instead of doing it this way, I'm going to say, or... You can write it like this. You can say, I'm going to undo the log by doing 10 to the power. If I'm going to do 10 to the power of log x, that's going to be the same thing as doing 10 to the power of 3. See, I'm just using this rule. I'm trying to undo my x's, so I'm saying 10 to the x undoes log. So 10 to the whatever. So in this case right here, to undo this log, I'm going to undo it by doing 10 to the power of. What that does, 10 to the log, they undo each other, so they cancel out. I'll speak. It's like this x. I imagine this x just drops down. It's like x just goes plunk to the ground. So x is 10 to the 3. And hey, 10 to the 3 is 1,000. Ta-da! 
Now see, there's lots of ways of playing with logs, okay? It doesn't really matter, whoops, so long as you can do it in some method. Now we have <clears throat> one that's not used as often, at least in the SL and the HL, yes. It's something called change of base. This is a trick. It says you can change the base to anything you want. It's in your formula booklet, which is nice. And the trick is you can make this thing right here uh, any base you want. So notice there's a log base A of X. You can invent some other base. Let's say I call it B. Okay, and I'm going to divide by a log base B again. And the trick is whatever this X is, do you notice it's almost like an X here is above the A? So this X goes here, this A goes here. It's a nice little trick I use, at least to help me. So that's it. So for example, now there's a number of ways of solving this one, keep in mind though. Okay, but I just want to show you how to do it by changing base. So I'm going to try to solve this one by changing the base. So it may not be obvious. Like I said, you could have solved it other ways too. I just want to show you the change of base way. So I've got an 8 and a 4. And does 8 and a 4, do they tell you something as far as logs go, as far as powers? I hope you're thinking a base of 2 maybe, because this is 2 to the 3, isn't it? And this is 2 to the 4. So watch very carefully. It may not seem obvious, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the base. I'm going to make them both base 2. So I'm going to say log base 2 and log base 2. And this right here, this 8 is on the top, this 4 is on the bottom. So this is the same thing as this. Well, good news, I'm going to use a trick we just did before. Remember what this one right here was? Uh, so let's see if we can actually do this here. Um, so what's log base 2? of 8. I mean, we can rewrite it, right? We can say, well, 2 to the power of what equals 8? Because you can consider this as this. I'm going to rewrite this as an exponent, basically. I'm going to say 2 to the power of x uh, equals 8. That's sort of the same thing as saying this. Right? 2 to the power of what equals 8? And I know that that answer is actually 3. So it turns out log base 2 of 8 is just 3. Now, I've just used this this uh, ex equation. In case you weren't sure about that, let's just figure this out again. Let me just write it out to the side here. Let's just figure this out. Because I want to call it x, so to speak. I'm just trying to figure out what is log base 2 of 8. Log base 2 of 8 is the same thing as saying 2 to the power of x equals 8. Right? Then you can say, hey, 2 to the power of what equals 8? Uh, 3. So I know that x is 3. So that's sort of where I got this idea here. In the same way, this is, wasn't obvious, okay? Keep that in mind. This is like saying 2 to the power of x equals 4. Well, then what does that make x? x has to be 2. So it's just 3 halves is the answer. Now, that probably wasn't a very good use of uh, change of base, now that I think of it, because there were easier ways to solve it. Uh, but that was just one way, at least. Because keep in mind, I could have written 8, just like I did before, right? Log base 4, but I did something very similar to it, didn't I? Uh, well, I did something kind of like that here. We ended up with the same answer. Let me show you, uh, so that, that, by the way, that was the beginning, at least, of logs. So if the change of base was confusing, don't worry, you don't need it as often, at least in SL. In HL, a little bit more. So that's the good news about this. The really important ones, the ones you're going to use a lot, are the adding is multiplying, the subtracting is dividing, and this little exponent here can come right in front. That's really helpful. You might think, like, why do I need to know about this? There's lots of scales that we use that are actually logarithmic. The Richter scale, so if you hear about earthquakes, maybe you live in a place that's very earthquake prone, uh, the Richter scale is actually on uh, a logarithmic scale. Decibels, so if you think about um, sound, you have headphones, you have things like that to talk about decibels. In chemistry, we have pH and buffer calculations. Uh, if you remember about this coronavirus, so I mean, uh, there's graphs about that. Sometimes they would show them as logs just to see how things are changing. So they are actually used in everyday life. It's a weird scale. It takes some getting used to, but hopefully this right here helps.